Welcome back, Renegades. Had you, you had fun for the last couple of weeks with uh, Glenn and Ray's excellent Facebook weirdness adventure. But hey, this week, special treat. Um, Josh Smith and I, he, he owns the Get the Get S Done podcast over in the USA. And it was honoured that I was on his podcast recently. He's been on mine. He helped me actually lose a whole heap of weight. If you want to check out our sister podcast in called Fat Phenom, which was a lot about how I have a weight loss journey. So Josh and I got to spend some great time together and he really helped me and I was honoured to be able to help him as well. So uh, he's one of the most intense individuals I've ever seen. So when he and I uh, got into the room, sparks were flying. It was like two energetic fireballs uh, colliding. It was a lot of fun to hang out with a, uh, a, a compadre, I suppose you'd say. This guy's got great energy. I loved hanging out with him. This is Josh Smith, everyone. You want the normal real estate training you've been told a million times, make cold calls, knock on doors, best be switching off now because in this podcast we go out of the box using unknown tactics primarily that the real estate industry has never heard of in order to get you called in more often, convert those listings and get more success without the painful cold calling. Listen up, we're in for a ride. This is Real Estate Renegades. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview. First off, thank you so much for tuning in, for checking out the show. Um, your support is massively, massively appreciated. The only reason that this show exists is because of all of your amazing support. So we truly appreciate your support. I truly appreciate your support. Make sure that you're sharing the show with as many people that you feel would benefit from the show. The goal is to always grow this show and go out there and have a big impact. Make sure to share the show. Make sure to comment. Uh, um, um, you know, Like us on YouTube. Leave some positive comments. We love hearing back from you guys um, and love getting your feedback. Keep kicking ass and let's jump on in today's interview. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview. Every single week, we interview top real estate agents, top entrepreneurs, and straight up top badasses that they're dominating their spaces. They're people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but to instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, their families, as well as have a big impact on others. So today, guys, another amazing, epic, special guest on the show. Um, this is a guy, very successful entrepreneur, um, was a very successful real estate agent, now very successful uh, top coach, top trainer in the real estate space, amongst doing a lot of other things. You know, he's got a, uh, his own epic, insane podcast where he's interviewed Arnold Schwarzenegger, Eric Thomas, Richard Branson, and, and just some massive, massive names out there. So you guys really stoked and honored to have Glenn Twitter on the show. Come show, my friend. Oh, Josh, thanks, man, man. You know, I was sitting there. I had to reach out. When I saw your podcast, I saw how freaking your energy, man. People say I'm energetic and enthusiastic. Dude, you make me look like I'm on Valium. And so I said, I have to connect with this guy. So I reached out to all my networks to say, get me to meet Josh Smith, man. He's a beast. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. It truly means a lot, dude. It truly means, you know, number one, appreciate uh, uh, wanting to be on the show and, and, and getting set up. And yeah, we, we, got, we got connected through um, – uh, uh, Brian BC, who's been uh, on the show a couple of times. How, how did you, Brian, connect originally? Uh, man, it was through another, uh, you know, it's, it, we talk about having your network. It was through another couple of mates that I have over there. And I did an event uh, and I invited um, uh, Greg McDaniel and Matt Johnson to come from um, Ari Uncensored. And they said, you got to meet our friend, Brian. And I tell you, when we met Brian at, at the event, man, he's just the coolest Dude, best energy, best command of the English language I've ever seen almost. Just a real cool bloke. And I really connected with, with all three of those guys. And we dragged in Josh Altman for a million dollar listing because I thought, ah, oh, if I'm going to do an event in LA, geez, I'll get my boy Josh Altman to come down and hang. So the four of us did this event and um, man, it was great fun. So uh, after that, I said, BC, we got to do some more stuff. So we, we had him, I interviewed him, he interviewed me and um, I'm just looking for the opportunity 
opportunity to bring a whole heap of my American secret weapons down to Australia, man. So, you know, you're now on my target list yeah. to get your butt down here yeah. to down under. <laughs> nah, it'd, be, it'd be a massive honor, dude. So I'm, I'm 100% in. So, um, you know, you got so much going on today and, and we'll definitely go deep into what you're doing today. But I'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them to where they are today. So we wind the clocks. Like what led you into to real estate and, and just overall entrepreneurship in the first place? Yeah, man, like most of us, we get into real estate because we've got nothing else to do. I mean, it's funny that very few people sit there as a kid and say, you know what I want to be? Although I have met some. I have met some that as a kid, they said, all I want to do is be a real estate agent. And I think, wow, that, that's, that's rare in our business. Most of us get into this business because we've got nothing else to do. So when I had nothing else to do, I was a singer guitar player. So my working life was, and I wasn't very good one. I was mediocre at best. I was just good enough to get paid. You know, say 500 bucks to go to a local bar, play K-San, or you wouldn't know K-San, it's an Aussie song, but play Copperhead Road and Aerosmith and Van Halen and classic rock kind of stuff. I'd get paid 500 bucks to play in the bars, you know. So that meant my working week, you know, Monday to Friday, I didn't do anything, you know. So a mate said, you want to try out real estate? And I said, oh, why not? Better than sitting around. So I did. And but the way they taught me was cold calls. Just churn out those calls, man. And whilst I did it, and when you in the intro said I was a really successful real, realtor, real estate agent, I was okay. My best year was 380000 which is by no means a slouch, but it's by no means the million dollar plus performers that, um, that, that potentially, uh, like that many of my clients are, dozens of my clients are at that seven or above figure mark. Um, so I was never there. Because the only way I knew and the way I was taught was cold calls. And it, it literally killed my soul that, you know, I don't know whether I'm big sooky la la, you know, big sook. I don't know if that translates, but, uh, you know, someone who could not handle being a people person on Saturday night that as a guitarist and a musician and a singer, I was the life of the party. Everyone in that bar loved me. Hundreds of people would buy me drinks and I was the cool kid, Right. And then Monday morning, I'd go into this little hobby called real estate, have to churn out cold calls and 97 people out of 100 hated me, didn't want to talk to me, hung up on me, called me all sorts of names. And whilst I tolerated that for years and made better money than I'd ever made before, I couldn't do it. Like I literally couldn't handle, because I took every one of those rejections as a personal rejection. It killed me. So... I thought I either need to find a solution to this or I need to get out because it ain't worth the money, you know? So I searched the world to figure out marketing so that how could those three people who didn't tell me to piss off, who said maybe or, 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 or yes, right? Those three out of a hundred, how do I get them to call me rather than me having to kill myself calling the 97 and having them. Because here's the thing, after 97 rejections, even when you call one of those maybes or one of those yeses, my spirit in theory, now it didn't always work this way, but it, it could be understandable how when you get to that 90, 98th one that was going to say yes, it's almost like your energy, your demeanor or whatever says, yeah, I know you're going to reject me as well, so get on with it. You know what I mean? So you almost, you almost kill the maybe. So anyway, that led to a search and I, f I had to figure it out, man. And I'd spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'd sit on that freaking plane from Brisbane to LA 14 hours, dozens and dozens of times for years. You know, on that plane flight, flight, if any of you guys haven't done it, man, it is a beast. Like you get on there, you have a drink, you have a meal, you watch a movie, you have a little nap, you watch a movie, you have another drink, you have another meal, and then you're still only freaking halfway there. And it is a mess. So I paid the price to get the knowledge. And, you know, you see a snapshot of my library here of books, of CDs, of programs or whatever, all with that one goal in mind. How the freaking hell do I get those people to call me? Because I cannot deal with calling them. And here we are. Work to treat, man. Work to treat. And I still apply that same principles to my business as a speaker and a coach. Because once word got out that I'd cracked the code to build a real estate business without prospecting, I, I kind of got popular pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Well, and I think that's, you know, 
there are some real estate agents, you know, and, 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 you know, Brian, who we were talking about earlier, you know, happens to be one of them that loves hitting the phones, loves door knocking and, you know, but man, it's, it's such a unique personality type and, and maybe it's one out of a hundred realtors that, that, and I'm with you, man. It's never been my style either, you know, right? I, I hate working the phones. I uh, um, hate all that rejection as well. So you go on this journey, um, you know, you crack the code, kind of walk us through that path. Like what were some of those ways that you, you know, that you started working out and like, when did you know and what did that look like at that time? Cause I'm sure it's evolved, you know, right? Like, you know, maybe it's your offers more direct mail pieces and now it's probably heavier, you know, social media, whatever that was. Um, but walk us through like what that looked like as you started to crack the code and how it's evolved over that time. Yeah. All of, um, all of those things you just said are true, certainly. Although, you know, I read an article the other day, uh, you know, direct mail's back. And I'm sort of sitting there going, hey, man, us marketers, direct mail never went nowhere, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I use all media, um, you know, and that's one of my principles is multimedia. You know, they need to see it. Well, well let's take it back. The first principle that I, that I probably think is one of the most important is most real estate agents don't get inbound calls because the public out there don't give a shit about what we're doing. Like we wake up every day and we are thinking about our business. We're surrounding ourselves with our business. We're working on our, our, our letters, our flyers, our calls, our dialogue. We wake up living and breathing it. But think about this. They're not waking up thinking about us whatsoever. They don't care one bit about what we're doing, about, you know, about this flyer that, you know, I'm probably the only person that collects flyers because I just collect flyers as an example sometimes of what not to do. So these were in my letterbox yesterday. And these people would have spent literally hours getting the right colors right, getting their CMYK color schemes and their logos to be accurate to perfect corporate branding standards. This guy's, you know, wondering about the die cutting of his invite to come to the thing. And actually, this ain't a bad one. Um, and this is a company notorious for never letting the personal brand of an agent go on their marketing collateral. This is a change for this company, in fact. But anyway, these people spent hours, if not weeks, getting these marketing materials ready to go. And what they don't see is I'm the only one that's looking at them because I'm collecting them as a coach. Everyone else is just taking these and throwing them in the bin. So the biggest principle that I wanted to crack is I was told that, and uh, you know, by uh, uh, an American dude, so I owe your country, man, a debt of gratitude. His name's Dan Kennedy. Um, he actually showed me this slide. Let me just whack this up. I, did, I didn't know whether we were going to go into code, but this, this is the principle, right? So you already saw the, 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 the oh, shit. It's, okay, I'm going to leave it on this because it put it on my other screen over there. So if this is a generalist, this is every real estate agent you might meet in the business here, right? They're, that's most of us right? And um, a generalist gets paid not well. And, um, and if a generalist is away, like for example, if, if you go to a general practitioner doctor to get a physical or you got a sniffle or whatever, if that GP is away for a month, you go to the GP in the office next door, the general doctor next door, you know, the one at the CVS who's, just, you know, you just, they're interchangeable. The next level up there is the specialist. But what I wanted to get to was the one at the top of that that in every industry, you name the industry, in, in, um, in, in, in real estate, Josh Altman, the famous version of a real estate agent, gets paid more than his generalist counterpart. In health and fitness, you know, our, our mutual friend Arnold Schwarzenegger, because I know you got some, some clout within the health and fitness industry, Josh. You know, my mate Arnold, and I say that, um, look at that name drop, man. Look at that name drop, <laughs> shit, man. Check that shit out. But Arnold, as a health and fitness professional, gets more money than his personal training counterpart. Um, in, 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 you know, in medicine, Dr. Phil gets more money than his specialist psychiatrist counterpart, or certainly more money than the general practitioner counterpart. So you name me an industry, there is not an industry where the celebrity version of what it is that that industry is does not get more and well and better remunerated than the generalist or even specialist version of that vocation. So I set out to make me the most famous real estate coach in Australia and celebritize myself, which I was not. And then I set out in my agent clients, you know, I was like the guinea pig and then I had clients that I would work with and do exactly the same thing for. For me, my target market and audience that I needed to be famous to was real estate agents, 
to them. It was geographic in a, in a three mile radius around their office. I needed them to be legend household names that if they go down to the local shops, that it takes them two hours because people keep stopping them and asking them questions about how's the market, what's going on. Oh man. You know, and that when they're finally calling them in, they're not getting this, uh, yeah, what are you, what can you tell me crap? They're, they're like, they've got a different energy. They're like, like I was with you, dude. And it wasn't fake. It's like, I'm on the podcast with Josh Smith. This dude is an animal. I respect him. I know him. I've watched hours of him online. So I have respect for you as a celebrity podcast host because of your positioning. And so my respect and admiration, I feel like you're really honored to be here. That's how you want your consumers to be with you, that when you meet them, they're not treating you like a salesman with that disdain. They're treating you like a special guest that they're honored to be actually speaking to you because they know that you're the real estate agent that, that, you know, that does all of these things. Like, you know, one of my guys, his name's Chris Gilmore. He's just an awesome example of this principle. Um, he was uh, at a listing presentation just recently. And there was a couple that were um, in his farm area. So the, 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 the principal have worked with them. They revered and admired and he's positioned as the celebrity specialist in their area. Mum and dad of this couple are not in his area and come in while Chris is still there. And they start treating Chris like a normal person treats a real estate agent, putting him through the ringer, you know, um, oh yeah, yeah. Giving him shit, not giving him shit, but being as disrespectful and questioning as we would normally be with a salesman trying to close us, right? And the, the wife of the couple, the young couple, when I say young, mid thirties, says to mum, mum, shut the hell up. Don't you know who that is? That's Chris Gilmore. He wrote the book on this because he's the author of a book. He's, he was on stage with Richard Branson. Um, and, and so she, the daughter starts rattling off the credentials of Chris, defending Chris because her mum dared to treat him like a typical salesman. So there's the formula that we set out to crack. How do we actually get admired the way anyone else in this world that gets paid 10 grand for their services like you name me a business to get paid 10 grand for a service that isn't, you know, most of us who charge this sort of money actually get respected. And yet people pay us really well and treat us like shit. Yeah. It's crazy, man. So that's, uh, that's the big formula, man. And when we set out to crack that code um, and uh, man, that was, so I've talked about the principle. You kind of asked how to do it, uh, man. Yep. Lots of ways to do it, but everything you said is right. What we need to do is break down the elements that make Dr. Phil a more revered psychoanalyst than his counterpart, that make um, uh, Jillian Michaels and trainer Bob, see I'm showing some US cred here, we don't have those guys down here, we have different biggest loser trainers, um, that make trainer Bob and Jillian Michaels far better remunerated than your standard personal trainer. Um, what are the elements? So I mentioned the first one become an author, right? The person who has written a book and there's mine. Look at that cover, brother. Look at that cover. Hey, eh? <laughs> so, um, and by the way, this is the first copy. I've only just got my book, you know, I mean, I got a lot of other people's freaking books, but the person who's written a book, that is a symbol that says to your marketplace, well, they have a saying, he wrote the book on this shit, you know? So that's, that's one. Um, and and there's, there's five big elements that make up a celebrity, but that's what we did. We said, what makes Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil and make a normal shrink, a normal shrink. And how do we recreate those phenomena in any real estate agent that is, um, uh, you know, that is wanting to take that journey, you know? And then the first one is, yeah, write a book on your area of expertise, you know? Yep. No, love it, dude. Um, you know, there, there, there's a saying in, in, in marketing, or at least a saying that I've heard, I don't know if you've heard this, but um, at least when it pertains to real estate that, that I kind of grew up with as was, I was building my real estate business, but it's like, okay, you can either be rich or you can be famous, you know, right. And you're, you're talking about being famous, but being rich. And, and, and what I mean by that, I think what the saying comes up is a lot of these people are like, Hey, we're going to go out there, spend all this money, be on the bus benches, be on the billboards, be in a direct mail piece but they're not structuring that with the right call to actions and growing it in the correct way. And, you know, like you, you look at the celebrity, 
right? And then people see them now today in the name and the face, but man, they don't see the, the hustle that they had to go through for years to be able to build up that cred. And so, so as you're doing this simultaneously, let's say a real estate agents, like, all right, man, I want to become that celebrity, you know, but I've also got to create now money, now success. So I can reinvest some of this money, become that celebrity. You know, how, how do you, when you're getting started, do both simultaneously, um, you know, right. So, so you don't go broke and are getting that business now as you're, as you're building that brand. Yeah. I would say that there's a reason that there's only one in a hundred, maybe one in a thousand. There's 50,000 real estate agents in Australia, right? There's 50,000. And I, you know, there might be, I don't know. I don't even know the numbers. I probably know a dozen of them that are at that set like personal clients and friends that are at the million dollar mark and up. So there might be a hundred, let's say that are at the million dollar mark and up. So that's a tiny proportion. So what I would say is in the early days, there's probably no way to do what you're wanting to do. Be rich and be famous. What I would say is those agents who are willing to eat shit, and go all in. And when there's a $10,000 check come in for a commission, they're willing to pay rent with 300 of that $10,000 check, eat two minute noodles or a little can of tuna with a buck 50 of that $10,000 check three times a day. So their food bill for the day might be 10 bucks. Their rent bill, they might be living with six mates, you know, And, and yeah, they are living frugally so they can put every penny into the building of that personal brand so that they can pull money out later, you know? And so the, the guys that are willing to go all in temporarily for a few years and just take, you know, I remember there was a lady called Jody Curran. She's a magnificent example. She was up to her eyeballs in credit card debt when she met me, about 30, 40 grand in credit card debt because of a deadbeat husband who pissed off and left her with all the debt. She had no money, no property, no go. You know, it's funny. We, we can not, broke when I was growing up, it meant no money. You can, you can wave goodbye to zero on the way down, you know? So she was negative money and just screwed. And she couldn't afford even to join my program. And she didn't tell me this at the time. She joined by maxing out a third freaking credit card just to join my program, right? I would have worked for her for free if I'd have known. I didn't know, right? But anyway, years later, it becomes a good story. But When she'd get a check, she would feed the kids as much as they needed. She taped the kids' shoes up with black tape and then spray painted them so the kids wouldn't get teased. And you know kids, the kids still got freaking teased. No amount of black spray paint's going to hide that that's freaking tape on your shoes, motherfucker, you know? So the kids went through hell. She went through hell. She's now a million-dollar performer. Only two or three years later, it was 2014 that her world changed. It's now 2017, 18. Um... And she's now a seven figure performer because what she used to do when the check come in, she didn't feed the kids. Well, she didn't buy the new cars. She didn't do anything, but say, right, what marketing piece can I put 9,000 of that $10,000 into? What can I do next? And she just went from flyers to directional pointer sign boards to, and then another check would come in based on that. And she then ended up getting pretty early in the piece, far more early than I would normally recommend. She started getting billboards in her area on the main highways, you know, and at the recent event I did with Schwarzenegger, she didn't even ask. And I like that because I could have got in trouble for it, but screw it. I got to admire her tenacity. She put an ad up for my event with Arnold Schwarzenegger's face her face even bigger. And then Michelle Bridges, who's like our biggest loser trainer. She's like our Jillian Michaels here. So she had her, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Michelle Bridges with her almost as the headliner saying total success summit live, you know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Michelle Bridges, Jody Curran. And she was one of 12 speakers, but in her area, she put a giant billboard for my event in her area, looking as if it was the event that was running that ad but it was her man. And the reason she did it was for the celebrity positioning. Can you imagine how pissed off her competitors were when they saw Schwarzenegger and trainer Jillian, uh, trainer uh, Michelle Bridges and their competitor on the billboard with 50,000 cars a day in her area driving past this thing for two months, man, that's the thing. So really the big answer to your question is, man, I don't think it's possible to be rich and famous early, but I think the way to get rich end game, I mean, look at Gary V, you know, I work with Gary Vaynerchuk. We've done a bunch of things together and I dragged him down to Australia, which was cool, man. That dude's been going what 
20 or 30 years, since 2009, so 10 years in the personal branding space since he wrote Crush It, right? So he's sort of eight, 10 years in. He hasn't pulled a dime out selling books, tapes, courses, and all that. Just everything has been put back in building a legend because he's got the longest term game of all of us. He doesn't care if he doesn't monetize till 2040 when he buys the freaking New York Jets, yeah. you know? So I don't think you can be rich and famous too early. And you just, but then you know what? I don't think you can be rich early through any methodology. You know, I don't know. Maybe you can, but um, I see the way to rich. I've now got a seven figure business and um, dude, uh, you know, this punching above your weight title, I believe that a hundred percent. I got, I was born with no silver spoon. I grew up in the equivalent of Jersey. There's this place called Ipswich, which is a little socioeconomically challenged town about 50 kilometers outside of a capital city, you know, working class town and all that. So for me to be on multiple seven figures in income is freaking crazy, right? I have to tell myself, well, I hide myself from the money so that I can just do my thing. Because if I actually focused on, holy shit, dude, you earn $2 million a year and that's ballpark maybe where it is. It freaks my Ipswich working class roots out. So I just let my business partner and partner handle all that shit so I can just get on and, and, and do the job. Cause um, yeah. So anyway, I, I, I've found that being famous is the way to being rich. Um, because like I said, every famous person, you try and hire um, Dr. Phil and see how much the bill's going to be. Holy shit, man. It's crazy. Try and hire. Now I, I, I may, you know, I may be on Mar Arnold calls it. Um, well, ET calls it the homie discount, right? We call it down here. Mates rates. Right, the, the amount of, of money that I and uh, look, Arnold doesn't charge me rack rate when when we've worked together, but even his mates' rates is still freaking more money than I used to earn in ten years. Yeah. Right. So, how can you go broke earning disproportionately higher incomes than anyone else in your industry? You know, sure, it might take a bit of money to get you there. You know, because I don't want our people, I don't want your listeners to rely on the magic dust of million dollar listing coming along and saying, hey, Josh, you're a pretty cool dude, man. Let's put you on million dollar listing Arizona, right? I don't want you to have to wait for that magic bullet for someone else to decree. I decree you, Josh Smith, the famous one. You know what I mean? You can do it without that, you know, uh, lightning in a bottle kind of, you know, like magic kind of thing. You know, we can take what makes Josh Altman famous. You know, he's the author of this up there. There's copies of it's your move. He's the author of a book. He's on TV, you know? So how do we get on TV? There are other ways to get, and it's not even get on TV. It's get in the media that the people see. And I tell you, given that this thing has replaced TV as the center of most of our attention, it ain't that hard to get on this bad boy. The fact that you can take 10 bucks, drop a pin on Facebook, and now 1,000 or so of your people in your community get to see your face for one cent. I don't know, man. It's easier than ever to get your personal brand in front of those consumers. Easier than ever. If it wasn't, some dickhead from Ipswich like me would not be, you know, relatively famous and on an international. Now, that's in Australia. In Australia, in the real estate industry, I'm well known, right? But what the hell am I doing on a freaking on the other side of the world podcast? It's crazy. Yeah. No, I, I love it, man. And, and you know, it, 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 we brought Gary V, right? And I, I remember when he first came out with Crush It, right? And this is when I was uh, with Remax. You know, he comes out and he speaks. And this is when he's speaking for free at the time. And, mm -hmm. um, dude, and his, his speech that he gave was, I, I don't want to say it's more powerful than what he does today. It, it just was maybe the first time that, you know, we heard that message that he has out there. But the speech is what you see today that he's giving. now. He's got the name, the celebrity status, and he's getting paid now $100,000 for that same hour keynote that he probably paid to be there because he had to probably book his own flight and, you know, right? What, but again, the message is the same. The value he's bringing is the same. Only thing that's different is the name he's Gary Vee. famous. Yeah, you know, right. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of Gary V wannabes out there, dude. There's a lot of them. They're doing word for word Gary V content. There's a whole yeah. lot of them, right? I didn't pay any of them a hundred grand, but dude, I'm one of the ones who paid that hundred grand to get him to fly to Australia and credit to him. He flew 14 hours or no, from New York, 22 hours from New York, including layovers, who knows how long flew all that way, flew down to us, spent eight hours on the ground, landed, traveled, 
came to my event for half a day, got back on a plane and flew back for his hundred, right? So he's an animal, take nothing away from him. But dude, I'm not, I didn't pay any of the wannabe Gary V's a hundred grand. I paid Gary V a hundred grand, right? Cause yeah. he's the celebrity one. All the others were saying the same stuff. And some of them might've been able to bring the fire and all that shit, but I don't care about that. I want Gary V cause he's the famous one. You know? yep. Now with, with what you're talking about and just keeping it specific to real estate, which is where the vast majority of our audience is, you're mm -hmm. right now, cause you, you have so many different trends that are taking place. You've got the real estate agent that always wants to be the practitioner that always, you know, wants to be the name, wants to be the face. So we always, you know, I've, I've, I've spoke with Josh Altman and hung out with Josh Altman. When you're talking to Josh Altman, right? Like he is obsessed with going on listing presentations, the art of the deal. Like he plans on doing that for the rest of his life, right? Then you have, you know, real estate agents like myself that have created a team that step out of production, right? Are branding more of the, the, the team image, which has nothing to do with my name. And now it's my agents going on that. So it, it, is, is this strategy that you go out there and that you really crack the code or master and that you're now teaching so many. Um, is it one of these things that really just works really well for that real estate agent that needs to be their name, their face, them showing up, or can this be pulled off by a, a team leader or a broker owner that's stepping out of production that wants their, their logo, their brand to be the celebrity? Yeah, that's a excellent question. And it's possible to do it at a team level or even a company in a corporate level. It's just going to cost more and it's not going to be as effective. But the trade-off is you don't have to be there. You don't have to put up with the shit that if you apply it at a, say a medium sized team level, like one of the first books I got back there is, Million dollar millionaire real estate agent Gary Keller, and he talks about building that super team where you're the puppet master, and there there are you know there are people working for you and stuff. If you pull that off and do this with that, every now and then you need to come up with an objection when people say, "Oh, I thought I was getting Josh Altman, and I'm getting his underling," because the competitors are going to say, "Oh, yeah, don't list with Josh Altman. You're never going to see Josh. You're only going to see his team." You know, so you need to have an objection. Uh, uh, handling formula for that, that you deliver in advance before the competitors even get to say that, that that's a bad thing. You need to have it positioned in the consumer's mind why it's a good thing that you've got a specialist in Josh that does certain elements only when necessary, highest and best use of Josh Altman's time. You've got a specialist in running buyers uh, individually when it's during the week or whatever. You've got a specialist in marketing and vendor seller liaising. You've got a whole team of agents working for you of which you've got Josh Altman to do the high closing and the high net worth stuff. You, you know, you've got the, if, if, if the consumer, if you say to the consumer, have you ever seen suits? All right. So you've got me as the Harvey Keitel, but certainly I've got a Donna and I've got a Mike Ross to be doing those other tasks that they are better than Harvey at. And so, you know, it's possible to do it at a team level, but it'll, it'll never be as effective. Meaning, you know, it's like this name drop again. Jeez, I'm embarrassing, but there is no better example in the world than Richard Branson and Virgin, right? It's easier for Richard Branson to have done what he's done and bring Virgin along with it than the Google guys. See, the Google guys went, it's all about the brand, right? I don't even know the names of the Google guys. I barely know there's two of them, but I think there's two of them. Yeah. And up until recently, you know, with the movies and things, I didn't really know who Mark Zuckerberg was. Now, the movies have put the Mark Zuckerberg name, uh, you know, in lights. And I'm sure the Facebook tragics knew who Mark Zuckerberg was for 10 years. I didn't. So, you know, it, it was just easier, in my opinion, for Branson to be able to do it for Virgin than the Google guys who made it all about a nameless, faceless corporate brand. Because the principle is this. I can fall in love, and I don't mean love in some weird, freaky way, but I can fall in love with Josh Smith, right? As in people and people can get an intimacy, a connection, an actual affection, even if they don't know them. I have an affection for Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Um, and I don't mean that, you know what I'm saying, not in a weird way. I genuinely have a connection yeah. at a human level with with Richard Branson. He's only met me like twice and maybe doesn't even remember me. Well, no, he must remember me because he invited me. In. But you know what I mean? Some of these people, we as their audience member may think of ourselves as having a different relationship than they think because 
there's one of Arnold and there's a million of me. You know what I mean? I mean, there's probably thousands of me in his kind of, not even his inner circle, but in his outer inner circle. You know what I mean? And yet there's one of him. So that relationship and context of me seeing Arnold as my movie star mate, me seeing Richard Branson as my billionaire mate, me seeing Gary V as my hustler social media agency mate who owns his agency over in New York City and, you know, and all of that. That's never going to happen with, oh, I love um, CVS Pharmacy. That's my pharmacy over there in America. That feeling is never going to happen at a corporate level to that. Now, there are some people that would say, well, what about Apple, dude? I love Apple. Yeah, there are some exceptions to the rule. Apple is one that people have an affinity with the brand and what Apple represent. But for every one Apple, there are a million app shits that, that aren't Apple you know, that have not cracked that code. And the fact that I can only name one company that has brand loyalty like that, maybe Apple, maybe Harley Davidson does as well.